Today I wanted to talk to you about brush hog setup for mowing, but specifically I want to talk about attack angles for different types of environments. So this is a pasture and it's grass, and we're going to talk about how I mow the pasture, but then later we're going to get into more extreme brush hogging and attack angles for extreme brush hogging. So I've got a five foot king cutter brush hog. I've had this mower for 10 years or so. It's beefed up. It's got a lot of extra metal on it. And that's going to be important later on in this video when I talk about attack angles for extreme brush hogging. But just for the setup, what I want to do is when I have this behind me, I want to adjust my top link so that I can lower the brush hog down so that this complete bottom edge is parallel to the ground. But I'll look over this fender and I'll look down and I'll look for the bottom of this piece of metal right here, the skid to be barely touching the ground. And then I put a lot of weight on the wheel. But the perfect amount of weight that I want is I want this to just start showing. Um, this goes up and down like that. But when the weight of the brush hog starts going on the tail wheel, this center pin will come up a little. So I'll know when there's weight on the tail wheel. I've adjusted my stabilizers or my sway bar turnbuckles. My mower is pretty much set. I don't have to mess with my hydraulics when I'm mowing pasture. I make sure my blades are sharp. I make sure my brush hog has gear oil in it. Uh, my top link and everything is secure. And now I just go. I can mow all day long pretty much with this brush hog at this setting. Now, when I'm attacking, let's say, small brush, I'll just back into small brush and try to keep the thickest brush in this opening so it doesn't go up under here. But that's small stuff, like one inch, maybe one and a half inch that I know that really can't harm this brush hog. Now, I've talked about this before, but I have extra metal welded here. If you have a standard stock brush hog, whether it's, it's round in this area or angular like mine, this is going to be your weak point. This part here is going to want to curl under when you hit things, whether you hit a stump or you hit, you know, a sizable piece of brush like two inches or so. I think even one inch brush will tend to bend stock brush hogs. Even your heavy duty brush hogs, they're going to bend right here. So if you're attacking a specific tree or a specific piece of brush, you, you want to do it here. Even if the wheel goes into it, you want it to go here so that it hits the brush hog blades. The blades are going to be right here spinning. And if they can hit that piece of brush and, and chop it and chew it up um, before it goes up under the deck, that's better than if it folds under here. Now I'll usually attack at this type of angle where it's up a little higher. If you try to do it down at the stump, you're gonna put a lot of pressure here, which is gonna transfer that pressure to your pins, which is gonna to tend to bend your brackets. By raising this a little, it'll bend that tree over. And once you chop it and get it down, then you can just run back and forth and the blades will chop up that tree. What I wanna talk about here is that there's a lot of vulnerable parts to the front of your tractor. If brush, you know, is four foot tall and you're running over it, as soon as it it like gets past this front axle, it's gonna pop up. And now you're starting to hit your electrics, your fuel lines. I don't want thick brush coming under here and tickling the underbelly of my tractor. But let's say as you're going forward, you have to stop for whatever reason. You come to the edge of a ditch, you see a pothole, you see something you can't go forward. Now that bent over brush is sitting under your tractor like this, and now you have to back up. Well, when you back up, that brush is just gonna get caught in all the cavities of your tractor and go up into these vulnerable areas as you back up and try to get yourself out of that situation. But uh, that's enough talking. Let's actually do some mowing, see the results based on the way I set up the brush hog and then get into some thick stuff. As I was mowing, I was going forward and backwards, and you can see I did not adjust the brush hog. It is exactly how I set it up for the very first pass. So I start off on completely level ground and get my brush hog so it's level by adjusting that top link. And again, lengthen the top link, it'll let the rear of the brush hog go lower. Shorten the top link, it'll bring the back end of the brush hog or the rear of the brush hog up. So I get it perfectly level on level ground first before I come out to the field.
look at the diameter of this brush. I can get my fingers around it. I would say this is just over an inch. These are just over an inch, but they're gonna, they're gonna be a good example. I can come in between these pine trees and knock these over. Now I'm gonna raise my brush hog a little bit higher because it's gonna be harder to knock this over down low where it's stout, but easier up here. But once I get it knocked over, then I can just, it'll chew up these stumps easily. The biggest takeaway I want from this video is attack angle and driving forward versus backing over heavy brush. You saw me attack that from an angle where I raised my brush hog over the heavy stuff so it would chop it up high. Then I lowered my brush hog so I get those stumps ground up so they don't go through my tire or come up under my tractor. And I go forward and back, forward and back and just keep it clean around me so I don't have a bunch of trash going up under my tractor. And then I back into the actual brush that is now on the ground, those piles of brush, and I just process it. So you're looking over your shoulder a lot and you gotta be aware in between those trees, but it just shows you the capability of a brush hog. Now again, this is a beefed up brush hog. I've beefed in the frame, I've beefed in the deck. I wanted to get this video out there because I believe in using machinery. I don't believe in abusing machinery, but at $300 an hour for a forestry mulcher, I can, I can buy several gearboxes or I can buy several brush hogs on a 20 acre property before I would ever get my money back from paying a forestry mulcher. I did a lot of cleanup in 15, 20 minutes with a couple of gallons, maybe one gallon of diesel fuel, and I didn't break my brush hog. But I was prepared that if it broke, I would have to repair it. But I just know that those gearboxes can handle that. Okay, you definitely see some debris in the pasture. And that's one thing I want to emphasize is where Definitely hearing protection for the tractor noise, but also eye protection because you never know when these sticks are gonna kick up. But I showed you some before footage of this and you watched it happen. This was thick. This was no joke, thick. You can see I've processed a lot of the material. It's here on the ground, it'll rot easily. Now these stumps are still going to regrow that brush. So if I really wanna get rid of them, I'd come in here with the excavator. But I wanna show you the size of the pine I just backed over. And this is near the top of it, but the trunk was probably, it was probably this size pine right here. And I just, I can back right over that with the brush hog. But you'll see a lot of this brush is cut off, but I couldn't process it because it went back in between the pine trees where I couldn't get. But in just the space of a few minutes, I cleaned this out. But that's all I've got for you today, folks. I appreciate you watching. If you would, click that like button on the bottom. Subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care, y'all.